Monaco Without Walls, aka the Hungara Ring. Let's talk about my home Grand Prix. Let's go! Hey, you're watching Content as Content. My name is Laila. So, I won't be talking about driving. I don't know anything about driving. I literally never ever drove a car. Sometimes I drove the simulator, but like that wasn't exactly the same as driving at a real racetrack or even like a road. So what I'll be talking about is the history of this track, why was this track built, and a lot of other exciting information about it. So to understand why was this track built, we need to go back in history and the Iron Curtain. So the Iron Curtain was basically a political boundary dividing Europe into two parts, the West and the East. Later, it became a physical wall and people were forbidden to cross it. So when Bernie Eccleston wanted a race behind the Iron Curtain, it means the eastern part of Europe and Hungary was also part of it. So Bernie first wanted a race in Moscow, but when he got there, he didn't even leave the airport because he thought it was too gray. It was winter, it was raining, it was all just really well, gray. Then he wanted Yugoslavia, but as you know, Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore. So after all, it was a good choice not to bring the race there, because what would we do now? It was Tomasz Rohony, one of the organizers of the Brazilian Grand Prix, who suggested Hungary to Bernie. And when they went there, Bernie fell in love with the city of Budapest immediately. So they settled for Hungary and first Bernie wanted a city race like Monaco, but this posed a quite a few complications. First, they wanted to use the old racing circuit, which was at the Nefligat, but the government didn't allow it because then they would need to cut off all the trees there. So for the next location, they wanted the Varosligat, which is basically next to a zoo. So the management of the zoo said that they can hold the race there because it would disturb the animals over the race we can with the extreme noise. So Bernie's reply to this was that they should take the animals on vacation for that race weekend. Obviously, hopefully, this was a joke, so they started to look outside of Budapest. They found quite a few locations and there are different stories of why these locations weren't good for building a circuit. My favorite one is next to the Lake Valencia. It was an area with bases that belonged to the army. So even though they planned the circuit and they even went there to build the circuit with all the machines and stuff, the soldiers just simply took the drivers off these machines. After considering seven locations in total, they settled for Mogyarod. But this wasn't the perfect place either. So after they started building the circuit, they ran into quite a few complications again. For example, there was a battle between King Solomon and Bela the First son. By the way, King Solomon lost his royal title in that battle. Also, he lost the battle. But let's not forget about this on the 14th of March 2074, because that will be the millennium. Then they found out that there were seven springs in total in this area. So they needed to install soakaways, which made the construction a lot more expensive than they had planned to do. Also, first for the government, it seemed that this would be like a pretty easy installation to build a circuit, but then they found out that this is much more expensive than they thought. They constantly overexceeded their budget, so it came out to be a lot more expensive than they thought it would be. But compared to other circuits in other countries, it was still a lot cheaper. In other countries, only the design would cost as much money as the construction cost at the Hungara Ring. Another complication, which wasn't exactly a complication, was that they had to make this track without even seeing a Formula One track before in their life. So the Hungarian media didn't really show Formula One races and the radio was also really silent about it. And even though they tried to make out the championship standing the radio didn't really talk about it sometimes they would only learn who the first place was in other grand prix so building a formula one track in hungary was like a pretty big thing 
And because Ecclestone forbade them to see an other Formula One track, they had to do it out of their own imagination. But still, with all this stuff, they finished the Honda Ring in less than eight months, which is basically a record for the quickest track ever built. Also, some people believe that this track bought the end of communism in Hungary because this was basically the first Western thing that came into the East part of Europe. But let's move on to the track characteristics. So this track is really, really dusty because of the sandy soil, which means less drip in the sessions. On other tracks, when they don't use it for like a long time, it becomes really dusty, but then as they go on with the sessions, it becomes clear, but not here. The Hungarian ring gets dusty so, so quickly that it doesn't help between sessions. Exception here is Q3 when the drivers try to go out as late as possible so the others would clean the track for them. This soil also caused like a big problem in building Tribune because there is like a huge general admission area which can be used for Tribune because it would cause like the soil to go down. But great for general admission, right? Also, I said I won't be talking about driving, but as much as I know, you can overtake in turn one and basically that's it. The track is not called Monaco without walls for nothing. Basically, to overtake, it's really difficult because the track is really twisty. You have only one main straight. Obviously, you have one main straight. That, that, that is why it's called a main straight, I mean. So you basically have one overtake possibility and if you miss that you have to wait another lap to try again. There were some design that surfaced in these past years but there aren't really serious plans for the moment to upgrade this track. The last update was in 2003 when they changed basically the last couple of turns and the first one. Obviously it's my home Grand Prix so I really really love this track. I mean it has a huge history. It's basically the second longest running track on the calendar without interruption after Monza. But let's see what others think. So according to TripAdvisor, this track is not suitable for friends, family, or couples. So basically you can go there by yourself and be happy with it. But there is Anya who took it to a whole other level. Formula One is not for me. I hate the noise and the crowd. I hate Formula One. I deeply am happy that Hungary is among those places where there is a Formula One. The only luck that it is not in Budapest. Magyarod is the place, which is not Budapest. Not even part of Budapest. You understand? Oh my god, I'm going to get cancelled for this. So, thank you for this remark. Agnes, Karen, but I still have an overall score of 4.5, which is pretty great. Also, as it is the only Eastern European Formula One track, Formula One race, basically all of the people from Eastern Europe come there to see a Grand Prix. Also, a lot of people from Western Europe come here because even with the plane tickets and the accommodation, it's still a lot cheaper. So come to Hungary. No, actually don't come because then it will be sold out so, so quickly and I won't be able to get my ticket, which will be bad for me. Also, what I noticed is that a lot, a lot of Finnish people come to the Hungara ring. Obviously, they wave the Finnish flag and when we, I mean, my brother and I, walk to the suburban railway stop in Filashliget, we notice that there is a pub decorated with only Finnish flags. I mean... If you're Finnish or you support Valtteri Bottas, you should definitely go there. Also, there are a lot of Dutchies too, but they are everywhere, so... Big thing, huh? So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, then like and subscribe. I never know how to finish my video. <laughs> it's always so cringy. <laughs> Okay, bye!